Welcome back to Neurotransmissions. I'm Allie Astrocyte. Taste is very subjective, isn't it? Uh -huh. Some people don't like sweet things, while others, like me, can't get enough. How does taste even work? Yeah. Let's find out. Mmm. Brain freeze. Yes. Taste is also called gustation. Huh. Just like smell, taste is a chemosensation. It breaks down and interprets chemical signals from the food and drink you put in your mouth. You probably already know that you can taste things thanks to the taste buds on your tongue. Uh -huh. All of those tiny little bumps you can see when you stick your tongue out are covered in hundreds of taste buds. And each taste bud contains between 50 and 100 individual taste receptor cells. There are two major families of taste receptor. Type 1 is the sweet family, while type 2 is the bitter family, and different combinations of receptors within those categories determine the different tastes we experience. Currently, science recognizes five major categories of flavor. Sweet, salty, bitter, sour, and umami, which is a Japanese word meaning pleasant, savory taste. Hmm. Let's talk about each of the different flavors and what science knows about how we taste them. It's hard to find someone who doesn't like sweet things. Uh -huh. Sweetness is what we taste when a food is full of simple carbohydrates, like sugar, and our taste buds can be tricked with artificial sweetener too. Sweetness is detected with a G-protein coupled receptor on your taste receptor cells from the taste receptor 1, or TR1, protein family which means that when a sweet molecule binds to the receptor, it triggers a change in the protein that sets off a chain reaction that has an effect somewhere else in the cell. In sweet detecting cells, two proteins together called T1R2 and T1R3 combine to form the receptor. In this case, it allows calcium into the cell, encouraging the depolarization of the cell so it can send a signal to the brain. We mostly taste salty things because they contain sodium ions. We haven't uncovered a definite salty taste receptor, but we think that the sodium ions directly enter the receptor cell via sodium channels, causing the cell to depolarize and send its signal on down the line. Scientists think that evolving the ability to taste bitterness was very important for our survival. Oh. Many toxic compounds have a generally bitter taste, so being able to detect the bitterness would have kept us from chowing down on poisonous plants. Still, many people develop a taste for bitterness. It's a primary component of the flavor of coffee, dark chocolate, and broccoli. Like sweetness, bitterness depends on G-coupled protein receptors, this time from the taste receptor 2 family. We have several different kinds of bitter receptors, and over 550 different bitter tasting compounds have been identified by scientists. How sour something tastes has to do with how acidic it is. Sourness, like saltiness, is tasted primarily because of the direct entry of ions into the taste receptor cell. In this case, it's because acids release hydrogen ions essentially just protons. We're not totally sure yet how this works, but we think that these positively charged protons travel through ion channels to trigger an electrical change within the cell, and this depolarizes the cell to trigger the start of the signal. Umami receptors detect a molecule called glutamate, found in savory flavors like mushrooms and meat broths. Like sweetness and bitterness, the umami receptors are G-coupled protein receptors, in this case, T1R1 and T1R3. Now, imagine you've just taken a bite of this delicious ice cream. Mmm. Mm. And now, your sweet receptors are all signaling to your taste receptor cells to fire. How does that signal reach your brain and let you know that you're enjoying the taste of ice cream? Yeah. There are three major cranial nerve pathways that participate in this transmission. The facial nerve, glossopharyngeal nerve, and vagus nerve receive signals from the front, middle, and back parts of your tongue, respectively, and pass that information on to a brain structure called the solitary tract nucleus, or the NTS for short. From there, the information is passed up to the gustatory neocortex, where higher order processing can occur. The different taste sensations are preserved all the way up to this level, and different cells in the cortex respond to each of the five taste types, as well as coding the intensity of the taste. Studies in primates have indicated that these cells signal less when an animal is full, and that some neurons fire in response to images or the smell of food. Huh. This means that the gustatory neocortex is probably important for identifying and choosing foods. One thing we don't know very much about is how we attach pleasure to different tastes. Yeah. Because taste is so subjective, and because you can train yourself to learn to like new foods, there's probably some very interesting neuroscience behind the connection of taste to value. We just don't know that much about it, but maybe 10 years from now, science will have it all figured out. Have some questions or other info you want to share? Put them in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to become a Brainiac. Also, if you really like what we do here, 
consider contributing to our Patreon account. Our content will always be free, but any help we get from you will make our content better. Join us next week to learn a little bit about the last major sense, touch. Until our next transmission, I'm Allie Astrocyte. Over and out.